The New Belleville Baptist Church in Cheek, Texas would sing the song just like this, real old school. Say, walk in the light. Walk. Say, come when the dew drops. Come when the dew drops. The mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. was mercy brought me from my pagan land, taught my benighted soul to understand that there's a God, that there's a savior too. Once I redemption neither sought nor knew, some view our sable race with scornful eye. Their color is a diabolical dye. Remember, Christians, Negroes black as cane may be refined and join the angelical train. I arrived in this country on the ship called Phyllis after being captured from the coast of West Africa. I was but the tender age of seven or eight with nothing on except a dirty carpet. Fearing he would lose money on me due to my frailty, the ship's captain, Peter Gwynn, sold me to Mr. John Wheatley. Since there was no indication of my name, he assigned me the name Phyllis after the ship I arrived on and gave me his last name, which afforded me an identity. Mrs. Susanna Wheatley, 
being aware of my frail state protected me from household duties and, and taught me to read and write. It is because of her that I became learned in the Bible, astronomy, geography, history, British literature, and the Greek and Latin classics. With her guidance, I was first published at the tender age of 13. By the time I'd reached 20 years of age, international acclaim had landed at my feet, and for that, I am eternally grateful. Mrs. Wheatley stood by me when colonists here in Boston rejected the notion of supporting, let alone publishing, an African's literature. She introduced my work to Lady Selena Hastings, Countess of Huntington, the bookseller Archibald Bell of London, and then went further in having her son take me to London. And that let me know that she truly was a genuine friend. My book, Poems on Various Subjects, was a great success, and I have had the opportunity to travel about the world to promote it. I have been in the company of such dignitaries as Benjamin Franklin and Dr. Benjamin Rush, both signers of the Declaration of Independence. Mr. George Washington referred to me as a great political talent and thanked me for sharing my work with him. In London, some criticized Mrs. Wheatley for promoting me as an African genius while keeping me in bondage, but what they do not know is that she never treated me as enslaved and always provided a haven for me. Unfortunately, that safe space is no more since she has taken her rest. In some ways, that sanctuary has been, well, it's been my isolation, for I belong no more in the enslaved community than amongst her friends and neighbors, despite her granting my freedom. I find now that I am without direction. Perhaps, perhaps that is why I took so quickly to John Peters, a free man, and now my husband. Aside from that, he, he is quite a handsome man with great manners and well-educated. Mostly, he is someone that loves me and wants to take care of me. And things were quite lovely for a while despite having death take two of our three children. However, as time moves on, it, it, well, it's becoming quite unbearable and I find myself in great distress. John is now incarcerated for unpaid debts and I have been reduced to cleaning the boarding house we live in to support myself and our one remaining child. I, Phyllis Wheatley, who have stood in the presence of kings and queens, have corresponded with presidents honored by all London, have been reduced to living in squalor in the most disreputable part of town. I, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> Despite my circumstances, I continue to work, I continue to write, and publish my poems. Soon as the sun forsook the eastern main, the pealing thunder shook the heavenly plain. Majestic grandeur from the zephyr's wing exhales the incense of the blooming spring. Soft pearl, the streams, the birds renew their notes and through the air their mingled music floats. So may our breasts with 
every virtue glow the living temples of our God below filled with the praise of him who gives the light and draws the sable curtains of the night let placid slumbers soothe each weary mind and mourn to wake more heavenly more refined so shall the labors of the day begin, more pure, more guarded from the snares of sin. Night's leading scepter seals my drowsy eyes, then cease my song till fair aurora rise. I am Phyllis Wheatley, your most humble servant. <laughs>